Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Dante Elefante podcast. We are back. Uh, sorry about last week. I think last week I just got really distracted. And now we're back. Episode 35 with Jackie Cohen. I haven't talked to Jackie in a while. It felt really good to talk again. It's been good. I've been good. I've, uh, I've been real busy. I guess this is coming out. I guess this is coming out on Tuesday. So as you already know, the Emotion music video is out now. Go check out the new music video. It's on Born Losers. Born Losers. It's on their YouTube channel. Go check it out. Um, the label from Philadelphia that is releasing my next record. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm. I'm. I thought thought the music video came out so well. I am so excited. It looks so good. And I didn't have to be there. I didn't have to be there for the uh, 10 hour day, the 4 a.m. call time where I'm fucking falling asleep. That's That was kind of my experience with the Rare Attractions video. I was, I was up so fucking early. Yeah, I didn't have to be there for any of that, which is really good. Uh, which is not bad. I had a great time shooting the Rare Attractions video, but that's like some serious like acting shit that I'm just like, I don't know. I love, I think, I, I like acting, but I don't know. That's intense. Uh, let's get into it. Jackie and I talked about a lot of different things. We hadn't seen each other in a while. I haven't, I haven't seen her and, and the rest, you know, Rado and Sam France and all these people. I haven't really seen them in a while, but she has her own music aside because she was in Foxygen doing backup vocals. And now she has her own project on Space Bomb. Great record label, putting out they they're putting out that new Tim Heidegger record and the High Decker record, and um, she 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 released Zag. We talk about Zag. We talk about the Zag demos that are currently on Bandcamp, and yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun. Uh, I think there's a lot of value in this conversation. It, this is really like two friends just catching up, but but yeah, if you're a fan of Jackie Cohen, thanks for thanks for coming in. Thanks for thanks for watching and. Uh, and uh, if you're a fan of Don Telefonte, enjoy the chaos that is this podcast, the exhausting podcast, as I've been told. I exhaust people. Um, if I truly exhaust you, please, I'd recommend getting your own podcast. You can do whatever you want on your own podcast. I'm sorry, mine is exhausting. Uh, but I will not focus on the negative. We do have shirts available. Go to Hello Merch. Go to Hello Merch uh, for shirts. I don't know which ones are available. It's been kind of a while since I've checked in with that company to see how what sizes we had left. But I'm assuming all sizes are still available, especially Double XL. Shout out to my people who wear Double XL. Um, like I said in the, in the last podcast, we do not have branded sponsors. We are sponsored by the people, and these are the people I'd like to thank. Andrew E. Roth, Joseph Hallow, and Ashley Brinkley. Thanks for keeping the podcast alive and uh, uh, keeping me afloat. Uh, uh, if you want to know how to become a sponsor, go to the Patreon. The Patreon. That's where you can find that kind of stuff. Um, as well on the Patreon, I do a Don Telefonte breakdown, where I break down uh, popular songs of Don Telefonte or songs I just like. This month is Pop Song. The first month was Call Me on the Phone. We did Never Trust a Junkie, and now we're doing Pop Song. Very excited. I have a lot of demos of Pop Song because it kind of went through like the acoustic, where it was just me on the acoustic guitar. We did a version with Shane from Gardens and Via, the bass player of Gardens and Via. Um, he did a demo with us, and then the final version that you know with uh, Jonathan Rado. So there's a lot of different, a lot of different versions, and they'll all be available. All all three phases of the demo will be uh, available on the Patreon, and that one's only like. $3. That's the cheapest one. And it goes in tiers. You guys know how Patreon works. It's tiers and then tiers. Um, yeah. And that's it. That's, I think that's all we're going to talk about. Uh, enjoy the podcast. Enjoy Jackie as I did. Okay. We are going. Jackie Cohen, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, Ruben. How about yourself? I am doing okay. This morning I started off with a little Asher Roth. Do you remember Asher Roth, I Love College? No. It was this awful, like, song, like, in 2011. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what triggered me to listen to that this morning, but I just finished listening to it. That song is nuts. What, and it was, what, what era are we talking? 2000, so I guess 11 years ago, so it would be, like, 2009. Oh, man. Yeah, right when, when we were all kind of entering that, that age. 
<laughs> Are we at the same age? Uh, I'm 30. I just turned 30 this year. Okay, I'm 28. So yeah, we're right in the same group of people who are being affected by Asher Roth, whether we know it or not. <laughs> I love college. Yeah, it's it was like uh, just about drinking and hanging out in college, and I, yeah, I don't know, it was crazy. Um, so but 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 besides that, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's still a weird time in our yeah. lives. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, just trying to make the best of it every day. Um, you know, make make healthy decisions when possible. True. That kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like I feel like this is a it's been a really weird time for um, like asking normal questions like how are you doing or like yeah. what did you get up to or like, you know, I, I, I saw a friend I haven't seen for a long time yesterday and I said, catch me up. Like, you know, <laughs> and he was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's, you know, it's, it's just weird. Cause I feel like there's a lot of factors here. Like one, we both know that, you know, the world is in shambles. And so mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it's like, we don't even have to address that, but you know, we can address it. And then also like social media. So it's like everyone kind of knows what everyone's doing. So it's, it's this weird compounded effect of it being really strange um you know yeah like having normal such a, conversations it's such a weird time and to ask like well i think like the question of like how are you doing is still pretty good because we're all doing well on different levels like i know some people right. who just feel extremely unmotivated to do anything even if it has to deal with their art like right i'm very unmotivated um i people like i've heard people like me where i'm like i kind of block out my day by like the hour and like, okay, by this. And then after I do this, maybe I'll go for a walk. And after the walk, I'll try and sit down and like, I don't know. That's just how I've been able to, to process it. So I feel busy. Like I feel did like you, I'm- Did you always something. live like that or is that an adjustment? I've always kind of worked like that. I think because I've worked from home for so right. long. I did social right. media marketing before this and all the marketing gigs have dried up, obviously. No one's- Right. <laughs> no, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I've always had to work. You know, when you work from home, you have to block out your time and it yeah. feels like a job. So I think I'm kind of used to that. Yeah, uh, you self-imposed structure or else you're just like all over the place, you know? Same thing with like uh, uh, touring. I'm usually up like before everyone else and it's like mm -hmm. I have to wake all the get up get up we have to go to the next city we have to i'm like the the tour unofficial tour manager uh, I guess. right right yeah. someone always falls into that role yeah <laughs> <laughs> i also just like to take the shower i like to get the first shower i don't like to use the shower after oh, everyone yeah. else has used it so oh yeah. yeah no one likes stepping into that sauna app, you know <laughs> oh, yeah after like the fourth dude and you're just like all right there's nothing left in the little like hotel <laughs> yeah. bottle but god damn <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy um, oh so but you're... i miss it i miss it too i do miss it too yeah uh so you're on the east coast right now yeah i uh i was kind of losing my mind a little bit just like cabin fever to the end um and you know it's like it's hard it's hard to say um like what is a good idea and a bad idea these days mm -hmm. and i've been thinking a lot about you know because tech i mean coming out here going on on a like on a plane or whatever it's not uh the most i mean it's not as safe as staying home although yeah. my experience flying was one of the best flying experiences i've ever oh, had really? Like people How? were behaving. Oh. It was like no one was crowding or pushing. Going through security was like it took like four minutes because what? people were like because you know that what happens when when you get up to the security table where the baskets are and everyone just fucking panic. Sorry, can I curse? <laughs> yes, yeah, the internet. Okay, um, the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like, so you get to the trays. Everyone freaks out. They think there isn't going to be a little bucket for their backpack. <laughs> You know, yeah. and they all start crowding around. It's like uh, it's like that video of what is it like all those monkeys going to go get bread or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like they, they fall upon you, and it's and I mean it's just chaos. It slows everything down. The employees get, I mean, no, they're stressed as fuck right now, but 
they, yeah. you know, they get mad. They're yelling over the, over everyone's heads, yes. like, like laptops out, take your shoes, you know, cause people aren't listening and they're going, they're just being stupid because, you know, they're not, uh, because they're more stressed than they are concerned. Yeah. Um, and so like going to the airport right now, it was like, oh, like society, like civilization. <laughs> <laughs> That's know, cool. Like, yeah. Um, so, so that was cool. But uh, yeah, I just decided, like, I ran some cost benefit uh, numbers and decided that I, I was going to cause myself more psychological harm if I didn't give myself a break than if, than, you know, I, totally. then I was fearful of leaving. So, yeah. Um, how long are you, how long is your, your, your plan, your vacation, your, your hang, your, I've been hanging for about, I, I just hung out for like two weeks and I'm coming back this weekend. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. I go home and hug my puppy. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, yeah. That's something me and my girlfriend have been talking about a lot. Like, like I, I went and shot the album art. So we went to San Diego for the day and even mm -hmm. just going to San, like we didn't even, we barely left. Like we didn't even get out of the car. It was like, right. just go into the guy's photo studio, come back out and let's just yeah. drive around. And even that was nice. Even yeah, that was like, oh. Just gotta We're just, see some different stuff. Yeah. And like move. You gotta yeah. move around. It's, uh, you know, it's weird. People aren't supposed to just stay, like sit like this. I know, it, I know. So but, uh, um, yeah, I saw you were hanging out with Kevin Basco, the main man, Kevin Basco. Were you guys oh, yeah. recording, jamming, or just hanging? Yeah, yesterday we, uh, we got some pretty cool stuff on the, uh, on the reel. Yes. Going on the reels. On the reels. The heads. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, my, Johnny Costa came over, who you may cool. remember from the Jackie Cohen live band lineup. Correct. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was it was really nice, look, fun to just just make some music. Yeah. For a little bit, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's hard, and I'm not I'm not one of those people who can just like get that or like scratch that itch with like sitting down with like my iPad and you know, I'm not one, I'm not good at it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, even if I was, it's just like, what it, whatever. Like I'm, I, I'm still, just, I'm staring at a screen and I'm by myself and it's not fun. Yeah. Um, so I've been, I've been really missing. It's like playing some music with some people. Totally. And, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I love it, Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> we did like a live, like not live stream, but like um, like a live session thing, and we were all kind of like spread out, and we had our masks and whatnot. But like, just like plugging in the amp, I was like, ooh, <laughs> I got like you know, skipper fingers, you know. I was like, ooh, I'm back, baby. <laughs> this feels good, even if it's just the one time in the last six months I've done this, and maybe the right. last time until next year I do this. But right. yeah, it was exciting. It's still nice to know that it, you didn't already have your last time. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, if I would have known that last tour I did was the last tour, maybe I would have like soaked it in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would have t documented it more, a little bit more. Yeah. Oh like, God. Yeah. yeah. Didn't take enough pictures. Didn't eat enough. Uh, yeah. Like, like, like oh, maybe we should have stopped at that place and eaten there and tried right. it and yeah, you know. It's all about moving forward. I know, but you know what? It's like keep, things will get better. I think. Mm -hmm. I hope. I don't. It's mm -hmm. like I don't know. I don't want to be. I don't want to be fatalistic anymore. Yeah, yeah. No crazy predictions. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I just you just have to think that like there are enough people who want to like keep music alive. Yeah. That it totally. all that it'll live it'll survive have you been uh writing a lot during the quarantine i didn't for like the first five months mm. i just like just coma yeah. um no thoughts no uh, no creativity it just yeah. felt like I, I mean i was just immobilized couldn't answer my phone couldn't answer an email um i was just like so depressed and you know uh, discouraged and um you know it's not like everything fell apart uh, and everyone was like walking around like super happy healthy per like mm -hmm, perfect mm -hmm. before it's like 
I was already just like everybody you're already mm -hmm. stressed and depressed and confused and scared for the future and then everything just you know uh, becomes unrecognizable as totally as life and so like yeah it, it took it took me a bunch of months to finally hit the point where I had um, I had just been doing nothing so long and so hard I couldn't do it anymore yeah. and had to do something and then I just started <laughs> writing I wrote like 15 songs and like oh good weeks, you know and so, yeah it, it felt it felt good if not a little like um, like poorly timed <laughs> but <laughs> I guess there's no real wrong time to be no like, right no and y you just released like a record like 2019 so yeah there's not a lot of pressure to write do you feel like there's a lot of pressure to write to get something going for the next project um well i've been talking to, to people about this because you know what I, remember whatever that's the spotify like ceo or whatever said oh yeah yeah musicians, that just mm -hmm. insane like ludicrous thing about like well musicians just need to like make as many songs as we uh -huh. make, like you know uh, like bags of Doritos or whatever, you know, it's just like, yeah. he wants, he, wants he's, he suggested that it should just be like assembly line or, or, you know, like we just need to be pumping out more stuff and stop complaining. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's just like so wrong and like anti art and mm -hmm. evil and bizarre. Um, and so, yeah, I've been talking about, I've been talking to, to people about, you know, all the weird pressure and I think that the best thing to do right now is like resist that idea mm. and like continue to care and take your time and like, you know, honor your creative moments and, um, and not give in to the pressure to be like, uh, to like keep up with AI. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because, totally. Like what's the point at that, you know, anymore? If you're mm -hmm. doing that, um, I mean, unless you're one of, you want to do that, unless it's your passion to like it create it turns, content. It turns into this like Paul Bunyan, like us versus the machine. Can we make <laughs> songs faster than the machine wants? You know, right. Um, and that's why I've had a, a lot of issues with that guy saying that. Like a part of me is like, oh, that makes sense, but like that that means I'm not making albums anymore. I'm just dropping songs. Right. And if that's what they want. Like, I don't know. That's fun, too. And, and I almost yeah. went that route before I found the label, like, in the last, like, month. I almost, I was just, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to put a song out a month. Who cares? I'll have at least 12 months of material now because this was going to be an right. album. Um, right. But I've, I've, I've walked away from that, and it's going to be an album again. And it's just, I don't know. Spotify is, uh, it's annoying, right? <laughs> Spotify is very annoying. Um, it's a platform completely built off the backs of artists like us, mm -hmm. but then they go and give Joe Rogan a hundred plus million dollars to put his podcast right. on there right. while other podcasts, you don't, you just, you don't get paid for streams either. Like at all. No. So no. it's, 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 uh, it's ridiculous. It makes absolutely no sense. And there's a part of me that wants to take my music off it, but then I can't. I, I just yeah. I can't yeah I know I mean you, you still want to you want to share your music and you know it's like you what you said about like putting out singles instead of albums I also I don't think that there's a problem with that either totally you know if, if that's if that's the way you want to do it I think that we're gonna see like a huge increase in um, in self-releasing and like diverging from the traditional album cycle mm -hmm. um, because it's not working yeah. um, and, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, people, uh, people want to be in control, um, of their music now. Yeah. Um, I think that before there's, there was much more of a, a desire to be, um, like, uh, associated with, uh, like a company or like, you know, like getting it, you know, seal of approval from, from somebody, um like co-signed or something yeah totally. um and uh i think that people are realizing that how much their you know their presence is is the valuable part 
of the equation, you know, and I don't think people knew that exactly before. Mm -hmm. Um, but like you have that, you do all your own promotion now, you know, you're, you're on Instagram, like that's where people find you. And, um, you know, so I think self-releasing will, um, will be, become a bigger part of the music industry. Um, but I mean, there's also, I mean, there are also really good labels with kind people who aren't trying to like suck you dry. But um, a lot yeah. of them are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, another thing that's going to be popular is features. I've been saying right. this a lot. I think that's going to be huge. If we can get like, uh, you know, I can't, I'm just throwing names out there, but if you featured on somebody else's track and then it's a cross promotion thing and now you're building each other up and then they get you back and now they're on a song of yours and it's so big in the hip hop community and yet we're not doing it whatsoever. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, there was for a long time, there was also this um, culture of of just like competitiveness between, you know, people who would get along really well musically. And Mm -hmm. I think that is actually something kind of, I have I have a lot of feeling like weird feelings about the streaming and the playlists and the you know the, the social media and stuff like that. But I think something good that came out of it is that people are uh, are turning to artists for like taste and you know like music things that they like and uh, you know not not music that just business people like. Yeah music that musicians like yeah um and so it's it's kind of um it, it's pulled the community closer i think mm. um and collaboration is kind of coming back into style instead yeah. of the, you know the like lone songwriter like you know the whatever yeah uh, i also love the idea of people sitting down just writing together like Dent yeah. just put out a record and he had like a bunch of names on the songwriting i was like oh shit he like met up with people and just like wrote together yeah, that like, oh. stuff is fun. Yeah, you know? and and the way the oh, way sorry. technology is now is that like you just send stems or like just send them a garage yeah. band thing, and it's just like oh, I'll work at this when I get off work, and then yeah. Yeah, it's it's really awesome. I it's we're entering a a collaborative age, and I like that. Yeah, I think I think the power is going back to the musicians. Let's and... jam you and me right now. We're jam- <laughs> Stop <laughs> this talking. More <laughs> rocking. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So yeah, I, I looked on uh, your bank. I did a lot of research yesterday. A lot of research. I dug really? deep into the internet. I, I I started doing these podcasts with no research. And then I realized that, I don't know, maybe it's something about artists where we don't want to talk about ourselves. So like a lot of these podcasts, I'll be talking to someone and then it just gets quiet. And I'm like, oh, I should right. probably have questioned because we're not used to this yet. Like we're not used to just like right. free form talking. Like and most musicians don't like to talk at all. Like so. Uh, but oh, well, I did I look. Never shut up, so. OK. <laughs> OK, good. Maybe I didn't have to prepare so hard for this. one. No, but no. But I love questions. Hit me. Well, um, well I noticed you put out uh, the demos for Zag in May. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and those demos, they sound so cool and they're, they're so, they're so dirty, you know, they sound, yeah. <laughs> obviously they're demos, but like how much from the demos to the actual album of that energy, did you want to keep and how much did change? Did you, were you expecting them to sound so different? Did you want them to sound completely different? Um, I think it, it, it kind of, it varies song by song. Um, a lot of the, uh, like the spirit of the arrangements in the demos uh, did make it to the record. It's, you know, it, you might have to listen a little bit to hear it, but I think that they really did serve as a map for what yeah. we wanted to do. A, a couple of songs changed dramatically, and that's, you know, I, I think that... That happens. Yeah, when that, when that happened, like... Um, you know, like the, the original version of Get Out, for example, was like, I think I tried to, I was writing like what I thought was going to be like a real, a slow sort of like, um, like BJM mm-hmm. jam or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, when we were recording it for the record, we were just like messing around with stuff. And it was one of those, uh, one of those times where you just get like really stoked on something weird that someone does and you go with it. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and so, yeah, it's like sometimes we really, we really tried to like honor the demo and sometimes we were just like, this is really fun. Let's like see where this goes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I always, yeah, I always, I always like, I don't know. I've had, I've worked with people where they just want to do, let's just make it like the demo, but nicer. And yeah, right. I've always wondered about that. And I did notice there's a big, not a huge difference, but there certainly was like a tonality difference between the demos and what eventually became Zach. Right. Uh, I mean, there's, yeah, there's so much, um, there, I think that the energy was so much different. Like when we were doing the demos, I had, you know, um, I hadn't, really, I hadn't put anything out, mm. um, of my own. I had, wasn't, you know, I hadn't been signed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was, you know, still trying to figure out like what my vibe was. Um, uh, I was trying to figure out whether or not I like, liked doing this or, you know, not do, like, like doing this, whatever, totally. um, like whether or not I, I, I liked recording music. Um, cause I, you know, I, I wasn't, I'm, I wasn't like natural to it. Like a lot mm. of people I know, and it made me very self-conscious that yeah. I hadn't already been doing it for 10 years. And I was, you know, I wasn't used to singing into a microphone and, um, you know, I'm, I was still getting comfortable playing guitar while singing and stuff, you know, because it, it takes a lot of mental energy, um, for me to do that because I, didn't learn how to play guitar until I needed to. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's like, I think there was a lot of, there was a lot of like, um, uncertainty and insecurity and, and whatever. And then when we made the record, it was like, uh, like I was really ready to lean into thinking it was good. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start playing? Uh, you said you had to learn guitar when you needed to. When did you start playing? When I wanted to, you know, when I was like writing songs and mm. what needed to like play how yeah. they go <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for people. Do you know how to play um, like piano or how were you writing before? Um, like self-taught. Uh, cool. Like the, I, the way I started writing songs really was, and, and you know, it's like, I think that I've said this in interviews before, but um, <laughs> my dad gave me like a just a one laminated sheet of mm. piano chords cool and, uh, uh just out of like boredom and wanting to do something creative after college i would just like sit there and be like like okay a <laughs> you know <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and then you play with like these three fingers which is like mm -hmm. not the right way but it no. feels comfortable i don't know yeah i do that I took, too i took one piano lesson in high in ninth grade um and only because i was deeply devastatingly in love with aj holmes there you go. um my sister's friend <laughs> it was a, a a piano uh like a really good piano player and singer and he's like a very successful um broadway or musical theater person mm -hmm. now um and I, so I took a piano lesson with him, and I wore like eight ounces of Victoria's Secret body spray, um, yes. and like and I remember like putting on all this like lip gloss and shit, <laughs> and I showed up at his house, and he'd be like, okay, so play the scale, so you know it's alphabetical, so just play it. What? And I like couldn't remember the alphabet because I was so nervous. Um, <laughs> And it was just like mortifying. <laughs> and then I, he said something to me at like at school about about how much like body spray I'd been wearing, and I never took another lesson. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I was mortified and yeah. heartbroken. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, just like it took me um, like what I I didn't go back to trying to play an instrument until like 2012 <laughs> that was like 2007 <laughs> that's, that's a, that can be a traumatizing experience mm -hmm. oh man how brutal brutal um yeah piano i took a beginning piano class at city college and uh 
it just kind of showed me where the notes were and i was like okay i think i got it from here and then i just right. like, i dropped out of city college completely but like i was like i think i got it i can figure it out i got right. i got i got youtube <laughs> right now, yeah. now there's youtube and stuff totally um, so you know I, I, that's maybe i should get better at some stuff <laughs> <laughs> YouTube University. That's why I've been like living yeah. off of like uh, this whole quarantine. Like I taught myself Photoshop. I've been editing these videos with Premiere. So like I taught myself that. The one mm -hmm. thing I couldn't teach myself was uh, Pro Tools. I fucking hate Pro Tools. I've heard. Um, yeah. I would, uh, I'm not going to go in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like really confusing and not user friendly. I had, I just did a podcast with Spencer Tweedy this uh, week on uh, I guess that was Tuesday or Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I gave him my conspiracy that I thought they made it purposely so musicians couldn't use it. And he was oh like, I God. don't, he's like, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I was like, you got to hear me out. They don't want us to get it. Yeah. Oh man. You know, yeah. he, he, he's still, uh, he's still pretty pure, pretty optimistic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a really sweet kid. Yeah. And I think he'll stay that way. He's not, I when I met him, I was like, he was, I think he's a little younger than, than us. And I'm, yeah. you know, it's like when I first met him, it's like, oh, you're such a sweet kid, but he's a beautiful grown adult man now. I think he's going to keep his um, oh, totally. optimism through his life. Yeah, seriously. I hope Good. that's beautiful. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, totally. Yeah, <laughs> that was, that was fun. I, I, we've like, he, that he and I are one of those friendships where we just like each other's stuff on social media, but we've never actually talked and we've never seen each other. And, uh, um, uh, that's why I think I really love these podcasts. Cause it gives me a chance. Like I haven't seen you in a long time and now I'm I seeing know. you again and Sam, Jonathan, uh, <laughs> John. Yeah. yeah. So it was nice to talk to, talk to everyone again. Yeah. I, it's that's really what... nice that you're doing this. And, um, yeah, you're you're a great interviewer. Get, oh, I, I messaged you, didn't I? I was like, you get good interviews out of people. Yeah. <laughs> people have told me that. Like, people say I got a lot out of Sam. I was like, oh, I just thought we were having a regular conversation, but like, <laughs> this is the most I've ever heard him talk. You know, like, I was like, yeah, we were having a good one that day. He and I keep wanting to meet up again. I just haven't been able to meet up. Like, I have, I'm like, I'm not that I'm nervous to see people like mm -hmm. in person, but it just hasn't worked out. I don't know. How do you feel? You, I guess you went on the airplane. Like you're, you're pretty good. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I flew. I got tested um, right away. It's like I really feel like the the key here is just consent. You know, it's like mm -hmm. you just gotta tell people what you've been doing, where yeah. you've been, and everyone has to have an opportunity to decide whether or not they're comfortable in the situation you know totally. so it's like yeah. I've, heard, I've heard people um like some stories about people uh you know going to uh, you know sessions or something and they're all, all under the impression that it was going to be like a an isolated thing like they're mm. not going to go see other people it was going to be really safe and then someone what says something like um they're you know i don't want to i don't want to be specific but they say something that they left out <laughs> yeah and everyone just has to be like all right <laughs> 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 so yeah it's like i i i feel okay seeing people but i always have have like a conversation with first like are you comfortable mm -hmm. with me and I, you know, I'm comfortable or not comfortable with you and, yeah. and, you know, and then it's fine and you, you know, get tested and don't go around your mom until totally until you have, you know, it's just like, be smart. Like, don't be a dumbass and don't be like selfish. Yeah. And There's like, um, like a weird feeling people, I am not like a weird vibe people give you when, when like, I, okay, this is an example. I went to my best friend's birthday party. And they're like, oh, don't worry, it's going to be outside. I was like, all right. So I brought my mask. And I noticed a lot of people didn't have masks on. So I stood like the opposite side. I was like by myself, like really far from everyone. Everyone's like, no, you can come sit down. I'm like, I'm good. Right. I'm good over here. <laughs> I'm chilling. You do yeah, you. Like... Yeah. I, you guys are all family, but I'm not actually in your family. I'm just here. So I'm going to be on the opposite side of the yard. Right. Like yeah. I was not expecting to uh, like 
take any risks for you. Like we're, <laughs> we're not that close. <laughs> totally. Um, there's this, uh, I noticed on a YouTube comment, you commented, uh, someone asked about the context of Maddie and then you oh. broke it down in the nice long message. I was like, this is tight. Cause I always feel like I'm the only one who responds back to YouTube comments and, right. and, uh, uh, I liked I like that you broke it down like and Maddie is based on a book. Yeah, um, mm. I got the name from a uh, Jeffrey Eugenides novel that I'd been reading or that I read in college, and um, you know it was really like a that song in particular was like a like pop song writing exercise. Um, it was like one of the first songs I wrote. Cool. Um, and that was also one of the first times I'd ever been criticized oh. <laughs> online. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't feel compelled to like, to respond to e every negative thing anyone ever says about me or whatever. You know, I've, I've seen it enough to know that there's no way to escape it. Yeah. Like you cannot behave perfectly such that no one is ever going to like, uh, attack you or accuse you or criticize you on the internet. Yeah. That's just part of the part of the game. Um, but yeah, like I remember that person accused me of like not accused or but just said yeah. something like a way to way to infantilize a a a, a, a woman and a whatever. And I was like, uh -huh. excuse me. <laughs> like <laughs> this is my song, my totally. life. I'm a woman. Like, you know, yeah. it's I'm not, it's, I, it was, it was so innocent, you know, it's like, I'm right, writing, it's like what I'm writing is either based on a book or something personal, you know, and so it's, it just felt, it felt weird being told that it wasn't those things. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, I, you also, you know. You can't explain yourself to everybody, so. Totally. But I did yeah. like that you responded back to that person. I thought, you know, <laughs> obviously they're like mood changed. I don't know if you saw the responses, but they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like I didn't, like, you know, you that's kind of, yeah. I didn't that's know kinda, that. that. That's kind of what happens when you like confront someone and then you just explain to them like, this is actually what the song's about. And this is like, about, like you did. And they're like, oh, that's so cool. Thank you. Like even <laughs> thanks for acknowledging me. Thanks for responding. Like, yeah. You know, I have noticed that it's like, you know that how there's always, there's always people who will just like message you something kind of rude. Oh yeah. All the time. They'll, they'll just be like, I'm trying to think of a good example, but though I've gotten weird, so many weird comments from people who will just show up and say something like real, like offensive or, mm -hmm. or you know, rude about, um, you know, like my music or someone's music who I'm like involved with or close to. And if you, like, every single time without fail, every time I've ever said, like, why would you say this? Yeah. You know, this is, like, obviously rude. Why would you go out of your way to say this to me? Mm -hmm. They're always like, oh, I'm so sorry. I just, I'm such a big <laughs> fan. I would, <laughs> it's like, then why would you say that? Yeah. Like, let's just be nice and, to each other and, like, cool mm -hmm. and kind. And, mm -hmm. you know, we could be friends. <laughs> like Totally. Like you know. the um, the thing I've always found is that it's like usually people I know or like it's like, oh, that person knows that person and that person doesn't like me. So they're doing their work for them. That's what I've seen um, because I do have one person in town that loves to harass me mm -hmm. <laughs> and they'll probably clip this because they clipped another one of my podcast episodes and put it up really? on their YouTube channel. And then, I had, to then I had to flag it. Uh, and insane. So he he'll probably use this too. That's fine. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> what you're doing does not matter. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I know. But uh, I always find it's the people who know me or they think they know me, but they haven't actually talked to me in like six years. And yeah, I don't know. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I did like that you respond to that. I do like that song, Maddie. I love that EP. It reminds me of my last like year in LA, like because that's oh, like really? right when you put it out, and I was just like on the bus, just like listening to it over <laughs> and over again on my iPod. I haven't listened to it in so long. Yeah. Do you, do yeah. you not? Yeah. That I'm makes sense. Of, 
I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of like uh, afraid to revisit stuff after a certain point. <laughs> That's not. That's true. Let's, I need that amount of water. <laughs> really? It's a gallon. <laughs> I'm so thirsty. <laughs> Uh, my girlfriend got influenced by an Instagram influencer and then oh. they had one and they're like, we're doing a gallon every day challenge or whatever. And she's like, let's do it. And I was like, yeah. Oh my God. And now okay. we're doing it. Hold on. I just became so aware of how dry my mouth is. One second. <laughs> I got <Okay>. gum. <laughs> yeah. I think it's like I water. Think, <laughs> I think that's what like a lot of people notice like midway through the podcast. They're just like, oh, I'm talking a lot more than I've talked in like a while. And yeah. Right. Yeah. Can you hear? Like my- can you hear that? Is that like really gross and loud? No, I think it's fine. Okay. I think it's like ASMR, right? Oh yeah, I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do love those. Do you watch ASMR videos? No, it, it freaks me out. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Um, it makes me so uncomfortable. Oh, I love it. My all that the- hates it, but I, oh yeah yeah i don't know what it is i think this used to happen when i was a kid though i have one weird memory of like a teacher explaining something to me like on the computer mm-hmm. and she and she was whispering and because she didn't want to be loud and i had mm-hmm. like the tingles and i was like oh i'm not even like paying attention because i was just like freaking oh my out. god you had just like full-on like uh, like yeah. brain, brain gasm or whatever like, it is. Oh my god! Yeah. So I didn't know it was a thing until the trend popped up. Like I don't know, five years. A ago lot of people that. had that experience. Um, I really hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I find it very disturbing and uncomfortable. Oh man. Yeah. I don't know if I could ever do it, but I like I like listening. I think I've listened to it too much though. I think it's like wore out that sensor. I'm just like right. Mm. Like where do you go from there? When do you need to like yeah. amp it up? Mm-hmm. It can, you know, I guess. Yeah. Just turn it louder. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know at all. Um, I saw I felt this weird connection between your song, The Trip. And uh, I feel like it's like the. The partner song to hand in mine. Right. It's the it's the other duet. Yeah, um, it wasn't. Um, I didn't originally write it as a duet. Mm. Um, Hand in Mine, I think, was written specifically to be like that. Um, but when we were recording, uh, so this that re- that first time, because of recording the Tacoma Night Terror EPs, that was my first time ever recording music. Um, I had, had never tried doing it on my own before. Um, so I was like brand new trying to figure it out. And for that song specifically, um, we changed the, the like feel of it. Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's very East coast. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> um, so one of that song, there were, there were a few songs where we changed the field. Hmm. I, the way I had been playing it and had gotten used to singing it. And I wasn't good enough at singing, uh, at like recording songs to uh, like be able to adjust that easily. Um, you know, so we would, we would record the track and it would sound amazing and we'd be ready to do vocals and I would just get like overwhelmed because I didn't have any like muscle memory anymore. Um, and just like didn't know how to sing the song anymore. And an experiment that we did was I had Rado do a scratch vocal. So I could listen to it and try and inter- like sing along to it and internalize the new feel. Um, and we tried it with that song and I really liked the way he sang it. Cool. <laughs> and yeah. so when we went back to record it, um, I, I had him do a verse because it just sounded good and I got had grown attached to the scratch vocal. Hmm. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Were you uh were you really scared to get into the studio cuz you said you came in with very little experience were you scared was that something you had to overcome? Yeah, definitely. Um yeah. I was, you know, very self-conscious. Um, you know, I I've always been surrounded by people who are very like technically gifted or, you know, just like very talented. And, um, 
it, I had always had like my own things that I did and you know like I was uh, like my whole personality was just like college for a long time and then when I got out of college and I needed a personality <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, you know, I wanted to try doing, a, you know, something creative in a new way. And it's very intimidating when you're doing that, when you're trying to like learn a new thing in front of a bunch of people who are really, really good at it. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, it's like we did, I, I did the EPs with Rado and the Lemon Twigs. Um, and so, yeah, who are like, uh, it, it, who are like insanely talented yeah it, it's like, like this isn't easy. just like your average jam <laughs> no it's it's like i'm like a little i'm like a little baby and there's mm -hmm. all these like other little babies that are all prodigies yeah. and they're all like yeah i don't know yeah it could, that can be overwhelming like even even like just getting used to the studio but oh yeah by the way the lemon twigs are here and you're like oh shit <laughs> Like, here we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that's crazy. That's so cool. I think, I think getting used to the studio is, is something everyone goes through. Like I'm, I'm still, not, I'm still not like, like I didn't really get comfortable until I worked with Rado and I was like, Oh, we can do that. Cause I was so used to like people being like, no, let's not do that. Oh, like, you know, you go into right. like a studio and you're paying hourly and the guy who's supposed to basically just an engineer in my eyes, but they think they're a producer and they're giving their input on your songs. And you're like, all right. But with right. Rado, it's just like, let's try that. If it doesn't work, we take it out. I'm like, Oh really? We, we can do that. Like you can right. just do that. And yeah. I, yeah. It's really nice. It's really nice to, you have to work with someone who makes you feel comfortable. Um, because nobody ever does any, like does good work when they feel uncomfortable or, you know, like stressed out or like they're, um, like you have to ask permission or something to totally. have input on your own music. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's so nice. And, um, and yeah, like working with friends is really fun. And, and, uh, oh yeah. And I, I think it's so funny cause you learn things like I didn't even know that you had to learn how to sing into a microphone. I thought you just have a good voice. It'll sound good. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's so different than, than just singing to yourself. Or, you know, it's like, I'm still, I, I'm still not good at, um, at singing like, my, like supernaturally on a recording because yeah. it's just, it's a skill and some people totally. just get it right away. Like, you know, like Sam, for example, totally works the mic, you know, got to work the mic. <laughs> you kind of have to turn something on like, like if you're acting. Almost. Right, right. You have to bring this energy like there's a live audience and you're trying to make it sound like, I don't know. And then it's not. No. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that 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 took a while for me to get used to. And, and uh, uh, yeah, Are, do you feel more comfortable in the studio or on, 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 on the stage? Um, I think I've always felt uh, a little bit more like – like myself in a like in a live performance mm. situation because I don't know I think that I loosen myself up a lot like talking and engaging with the audience and mm -hmm. you know those kinds of things relax me um, and I don't know how to do that as well in the studio like I don't really have my tricks yet for getting mm -hmm. myself all like warmed up um, but I think I think you know, I want to make more records and I'll get there. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have lots of time. <laughs> yeah, totally. Nothing but time. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so I noticed you did do some full band tours and then you did play, which is you and Kevin. Mm -hmm. Was there a reasoning or just to try something different or? Um, well, I mean, initially we just, I got an offer for an opening slot that was and the the offer was for a solo or duo act mm. oh, um cool yeah so that was the my tour with um wise blood and uh i don't it just worked so well oh awesome. and it was also cost effective yeah. um because touring with a band is impossible <laughs> it's so hard <laughs> it's just so hard it's i mean <laughs> yeah. it's, it's insane. So, yeah. So the the stripped down 
um, version worked really well. Like I was getting a better response from the audiences than I had really um, with, you know, uh, with the full band, I think, because uh, I, I could, I felt a little bit more intimate that way. And um, like, I wasn't, uh, you know, trying to fight over like drum sound, you know, like drumming and uh, like shredding and that, you know, all the things that I like <laughs> when mm -hmm. I go to see music. Yeah. Um, it's all, it's really difficult to, um, to, or it's harder to perform sometimes if that's not like, I don't know. I, I'm just not one of those people who, um, can, I'm quiet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like a little quiet girl. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so it, it, having, having it stripped back with Kevin, uh, gave me more room to, um, you know, perform. And so like, we just took it all over. Well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. And if, if the offers for a duo, you're like, hell yeah, let's just do the yeah. duo. That's easy. Yeah. Was that in well, the United States or cause I've, I've also noticed that you toured a lot overseas. Yeah. Um, I went to Europe a couple of times and we did the duo and live band. Um, oh, really? yeah, I did. Yeah. We did a, a live band tour over there and, um, and most recently, a uh, duo, and um, yeah, it, it's crazy. See, every every tour is so different. That's why I see going to Europe as a duo, a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. You know, just put the guitars, check them, and then fly over. With the yeah. band, it's like now you have to rent drums and you have to rent a bass amp. It's like oh. Yeah, like you know, I mean the, uh, I I used to tour with Foxygen and we would, you know, have to with, get, you know, you have to get the bus and you need a tour manager and you need backline and you need, um, hotels for everybody and you need, uh, uh, you know, per diems for everybody because the currency keeps changing and it's just like, it's so expensive. Yeah. Um, they, and that was like literally the biggest band, <laughs> <laughs> like the largest. Yeah. Members wise, uh -huh. yeah. Huge. So the duo um, is a dream. <laughs> I would love to see uh, a Foxygen duo. Just, just Rado and Sam. I think they're. I think that um, you know, you never know what what they'll do. So. Uh, like a like a VH1 storytellers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's so cool. Like a uh, Wise Blood. That must. That's that's like a great audience for you because I feel like Wise Blood fans would love you. That, it was a really, really amazing tour. I, I, you know, I, I think I kind of, I already loved touring, but I, I loved touring my music. Totally. On that tour. Yeah. The first time that was when it, it like, it became something, um, that was like beautiful and rewarding and not just like terrifying and embarrassing yeah. <laughs> in a way. I, I feel like she has a, re like a, a respectful crowd. Like oh, they're so respectful, respectful and they know to be quiet and just they love music yeah totally mm -hmm. i feel like with some of my crowds i don't get that sometimes it's just like <laughs> ah it's like okay maybe yeah. i kind of brought this upon myself but calm down <laughs> some people are just there to party you know yep, yep they're there they're there for that that you know just pure visceral experience and uh yeah you know Sometimes that's just not what you're offering. And you know what? I feel so sad for those people now. Where are you getting it now? <laughs> the scene has passed. It's over. Yeah. The rowdy <laughs> rock and roll scene is, yeah. No, you're I You're done. <laughs> it's done. Um, yeah, th I remember I played in San Francisco once, and, and uh, after I got off the set, like all these dudes, like all these tech bros were just like patting me on the head, which I absolutely hated. And I was just like, oh, my God, I need to get the fuck out of here. Don't Thank you for coming me, to bro. the show. <laughs> yeah, it's like I am not a child. I am not. It just nothing makes you feel more of like, good job, son. Like right. than that. Like and it's just like yeah. Right. <laughs> oh my god. Um, another couple influences. Yeah, I was thinking like, uh, Wise Blood would, would obviously that tour must have been great. Like that audience would have loved you. And uh, uh, I also pinned down Laura Nairo for you. That's actually um very new. For me, really? um, yeah, I I never I never heard or like really intentionally listened to Laura Nero until I want to say last like end of last summer. 
cool. Um, and yeah, Kevin introduced me, and um, we listened to, uh, I think, I think the that record New York Tenderberry a lot, mm -hmm. um, and so that that became like a big, um, a big part of my taste, I guess, just last year. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just I'd never heard of her, and that's kind of like a sad thing, I guess, is that totally. people don't don't know her as as well as they should, um, because she gets sort of she's just like not as well known as like Todd Rundgren or like Carol King or, um, you know, but she's so good. Yeah, she's just as good. Yeah, not better. And in, insane, I'll say it. insane singer. And totally. I, you know, just like that, like letting loose. I love watching her sing. That's awesome. Yeah, I uh, I was looking. I had this like Barbra Streisand's Grace hits, and she has um, the last song on the record. I was like, oh, this is this is great. And uh, I was like, who wrote this song? Because I was like, oh, Bar Barbara didn't write this. So who? And then I said L. Naira. I was like, okay, let's see who that is. And I just like, oh, I was like, this is it. <laughs> yeah, it. She'll, this she'll sneak into your life. <laughs> yeah, she finds a way into your life. She's so mm -hmm. good. Um, another person is Margot Guyan. Do you know Margot? I I know that everyone I know loves her, yeah. but I still haven't heard her music. Oh, she's cool. Uh, I'm friends with her on Facebook. I tried to get her on the podcast, and she said, "Really? I don't do she's like, I don't do interviews anymore." Oh, whoa! <laughs> I was like, "It's easy. Just do it over the phone." Yeah, no, that no, that's okay. still one that I have to get to because I, I it's cool. like I I know, but and but yeah, yeah, um, yeah, but I just haven't gotten there yet. Who who are some of the people you grew up listening to? Like who in, inspired you? Like a like what age? Like child? Oh, <laughs> all 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 I've, all of it. I've, I've had a, a really like a very like strange. I guess not really. I, I guess I'm 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 finding out that everyone's music taste is was really weird and changed. Oh yeah, but, um, but For sure. you know, it's like I most I li loved like musical theater when I was oh. a. A kid and then I got into like the doors um, and then uh, you know and then in high school I was just this weird mix of like really loving like classic rock but my heart wanted dashboard confessional and my chemical romance and yes um, and then you know like I started I made friends with people who liked like cool music and so I had like mix CDs and and you know things like that and um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's just changed so much over the years. And mm -hmm. um, it, always, it always, for me, changes um, because, like, my friends introduce me to stuff. Mm, yeah. That's how that's I find what, music. Well, that's what it's about, too, mm -hmm. like sharing music with people. Mm -hmm. um, were you excited about the My Chemical Romance reunion that was supposed to happen this year? <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I mean. did you buy tickets? I didn't. Okay. I didn't. It's, you know, it, I, I still love that stuff um oh, yeah. i feel like i feel like i was a little annoyed when that happened because everyone on earth was like hell yeah my chemical romance reunion like and it's like you guys were mean to me when yeah. i like <laughs> <laughs> i was not cool for it it mm -hmm. you know it was mm -hmm. it definitely frowned upon uh -huh. was, you know so it's like calm down you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend said the same thing. She bought tickets to the LA show mm -hmm. and she was just like these, she's like, well, she kind of put in a way like there's a lot of kid, like young kids who just missed it. Mm -hmm. And she's like, that's cool because that's like a new generation. But yeah. there's definitely some people just like going for the nostalgia and it's like, you weren't even there the first time. And now you're, you just like it. Cause it's, it reminds you of junior. I don't know. Right. It doesn't right. seem genuine. Wasn't your experience. Yes, <laughs> I personally was not a fan of theirs, but I can mm -hmm. I can appreciate I can appreciate uh, how good they were and how big they were because I it didn't yeah. really process to me how big they were. I didn't really know either. I didn't really you know it wasn't as clear like what we didn't have like quantifiable fandoms mm -hmm. at, you know at that point where you could just like go online and see how popular someone is. <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, so we've been watching a lot of Gerard. She's like obsessed with Gerard Way in particular, aside mm -hmm. from the group. And we've been he. I guess he got in the comic book, so I've been like learning a lot more. I never even talked about the guy until I started dating her, and now I I feel like I talk about him once a week. We have a right. conversation about him. 
he made that he made that show that like a superhero yeah, show yeah. or whatever it is exactly <laughs> I haven't watched it, but he's still, he's still, and he's Joe Rogan's cousin. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> a shift uh, in the universe. <laughs> okay. I know. <laughs> the worlds collide. <laughs> oh, I was going to ask, who did the um, artwork for Zag? For Zag? Um, Adam mm -hmm. Green. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, he did the, uh, the portraits. There's one on the cover and um another like an alternate portrait on the inside there's like a poster mm. um and all of the little all the little the little uh things the like, yeah uh, i guess you yeah. can call them i don't want to call them scribbles i don't want to <laughs> do that but like all the little like stickery things yeah all, yeah little just like design things um he did all of that the it's in his font like his personal adam green font cool. um and so yeah that was a like huge thing for me yeah was that someone you really listened to a lot i agree oh yeah all-time favorite that's cool. like he he was he was like my rock star growing really? up like oh, in high awesome. in high school and stuff yeah yeah um yeah i think i got introduced to him towards the end so like 2007 you know when juno came out and <laughs> i was obsessed with the movie and then my friend said oh that's adam green check out his other albums and yeah i was like oh this is rad yeah he's, I he's really good <laughs> did you tour i think i read online you toured with him too or mm -hmm. yeah How i was... opened i opened for him in europe and it was i mean it was insane you know you get to yeah. like and i i would go up every night and um do a duet with him and cool you know it's like it's those types of things that are oh. you know it's that's a marker of success that i care about yeah you know? yeah that's awesome i saw him open for father john misty with binky shapiro oh yeah yeah, yeah. when they're when they're promoting that record yeah, she's yeah. incredible too. She's, I mean, just Did, insane voice. Like it doesn't belong in this age. <laughs> it, seriously, oh, mm -hmm. that was such. I love that record. That was such a oh, good record. So good. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's cool. Yeah, I really love that artwork uh, for Zag, and and uh, I was just like looking at. It, I was like, damn, this is tight. And I like <laughs> the, I like your band camp layout too, because it's the same kind of thing, but with you mm -hmm. in it. <laughs> and uh, I was like, damn, this is tight. Yeah, yeah. Last year was a cool look. <laughs> <laughs> last year um was just better i don't know yeah <laughs> i don't know uh okay let's see what else i was gonna ask how's recording with your husband um you know i mean like i don't think about it as as the, the dynamic or whatever you know it's like he's good at his job he's really he's very good and um He's he's definitely not nicer to me than he is to him. <laughs> you know, there's there's no there's no coddling going on. Okay, yeah. So uh, I feel like I, I feel like I get the um, the same like production experience as everybody who comes. Oh, cool. Yeah, you know? that's what I was kind of wondering. I was like, you know, because you work with him and your friends and stuff like that, but to be like more than just friends, like as <laughs> yes, you two are, like how it changes in the studio if it's the same like um you I, still I need those times to get away from each other like just because you're living together working together yeah I, I mean i think that i think there's like a certain thing that happens like like studio zone is kind of its own zone yeah um, true. and it kind of you know it it makes a bubble around everyone who's working and you know those dynamics kind of um take over so it's, you know it's also it's, like a also like a time machine yeah <laughs> you look and you're like oh shit it's nighttime already right <laughs> oh that's so crazy yeah that's so crazy um because i couldn't i couldn't think of working <laughs> with my girlfriend at all like i couldn't like think about like doing Oof. that yeah not for everybody it's not for everyone that's true that's true mm. uh let's see do you feel like the audiences are different from overseas from here, from the United States, from your experience? Yeah, um, definitely. I think that, I think that there's, uh, in certain countries, there's, uh, something happens where, um, 
you have to, someone like me has to start adjusting because so much of what I do is um, based on English. Yeah. Like the English language. <laughs> yeah. Because um, I talk a lot and, you know, it's like part of it is like making jokes and, you know, and uh, my songs are really like uh, wordy and, and lyric forward. And so I think I started to realize um, a big difference overseas is that you have to find other ways to connect because just speaking isn't working you know it's like the jokes mm. aren't hitting a lot of people don't understand what i'm saying um so like i need to spend more time singing <laughs> you know so um yeah there are there are differences that's cool do you think you prefer it or no preference mm. i i mean i i've had good shows and bad shows everywhere yeah true yeah i just haven't i haven't i haven't had a chance to go over there yet so i've absolutely zero idea of what it's like over there well they love guitar solos everywhere in the world oh, so okay, if you can do that you're good no i can't do that i have to get somebody else to do that that's that's, really... <laughs> that's just like i never like wanted to get like choppy i never wanted to shred i don't know did you ever want to shred uh, oh i mean i do but like i just i don't need to anymore yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what kevin's there for kevin mm -hmm. is the shredder <laughs> Um, I, I worked with Kevin. Uh, he mastered my new album. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah he's, uh, he's been doing a lot of, um, like post work, like mastering and mixing and stuff, which I think is really cool because as a, as a producer, I think it's, it's good to be able to do those things. Um, yeah. there aren't, there are a lot of producers. There aren't that many producers who can also mix and master. Yeah, that's cool. And, and yeah. mixing is probably my least favorite part of the process. Yeah, I mean, I think it sucks. <laughs> it really sucks to do. <laughs> and it kind of like it kind of like feeds into your insecurity of like, is this song good? Mm -hmm. Like, and like if you hear a mix, and you're like, this song's awful. Like, why did we even record this? And then next week, you're like, oh wait, this is pretty tight actually. Yeah, it's like a, it's sort of like looking into one of those, um, those like really magnified, like well lit mirrors. Yes. And when you and especially like. You know, I don't. I need glasses, and I don't wear them, so I have no idea what I look like. Um, and so, like when you see when you see yourself or your music up that close, it's like, yes. oh no, oh no, oh, <laughs> no. I can't believe that I've done this in public. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then you tell people, you show people, and they're like, yeah, sounds great. I didn't see anything. Same thing when they see you, they're like, you look great. Right. I'm like, all right, right, I'll take it. Right, I have oh, to. Man. <laughs> I have to, or I will die. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Do you feel I? One thing I've I've liked about doing this podcast is that like you realize that some of our insecurities and like and the games we play in our own head are are very universal. Mm -hmm. You know that feeling of like this song is shit, this song is great, the teeter totter, like the seesaw of that is is very universal. The the lack of of uh, <clears throat> uh, motivation in the quarantine is also universal, which is like really relieving for me to hear yeah and, uh, there's yeah, no it's... question behind that i'm just kind of ranting now <laughs> no no i i agree i think i think that it, it is nice that um